All right, thank you so much. Um, I'm Caroline Schroeder. You might know me, Carrie Schroeder, on social media. And I'm here to talk about um, Coptic language and literature, which is um, from Egypt. Coptic is the last phase of the ancient Egyptian language used during the Roman period and forward. Um, eventually, the spoken and administrative written language that takes over is, of course, Arabic. Um, and today, it's used in the Coptic church ritually and um, also in a couple of revival efforts in the US, Jerusalem, and Cairo, but really other, pretty much not spoken. Um, the literature that um, we work with in my project is um, kind of a dismembered and dispersed corpus of literature um, due to the antiquities trade. Um, you know, these uh, codices of Coptic literature were treated as kind of artifacts and antiquities and have been dispersed primarily throughout the global north um, and not so much um, in Egypt. So this map is um, a map of where texts are by one particular author from one um, original uh, monastery repository in Egypt, um, and the author wrote from the fourth, fifth cent centuries. Um, and so what this means is you will have um, historical works that are in fragments all over the world. This is the most egregious example of like one page that is in four different places, one of which is a private collection, um, Vienna, Vienna, Vienna um, Paris, but two different shelf marks in Paris, right? So they're not even together. This is the worst case scenario, but still you might have one work that is in two, three, four different places in the world. Um, so our project, Coptic Scriptorium, provides open source, open access, interdisciplinary research platform. We do NLP tools for the Coptic language. We have digital editions of texts. We have a searchable database with annotations and collaborative research environment, and we also have worked on a um, dictionary, an online dictionary, with German partners who created the lexicon that um, we kind of put online in an interactive interface and linked to all of our texts, word, word for word. Um, and then also we have been working on OCR, and there's a poster this afternoon about OCR that our postdoc, Lydia Bremer McCollum, was going to be um, talking about. Um, we have a small team. This looks like a lot of people, but Really, the core is just um, you know four to eight people at any time, mostly part time. We don't have any graduate students. We don't teach the language um, in the programs where our PIs are, and so um, it's kind of a very it's a very dispersed team. Um, but we do work with um, the one of the primary nonprofit heritage community foundations here in the US, the St. Shenouda Foundation, that's run by Coptic Americans who are trying to kind of bridge academia, the church, the laity, Egypt, and the diaspora. Um, so we, we work closely with them too. Um, so what we try to do is address some of the challenges of colonialism's legacy and enduring entanglements. And my proposal and abstract talked about digital computational strategies, but in my remaining time, I'm really talking more about human strategies um, because that um, is, that's a big piece of it. And sort of thinking about is what we're doing anti-colonial, post-colonial, decolonial. Um, so on our site, um, the, you know, there are a couple of texts where you know, it's the only place you can read that text, like beginning to end, um, because it's not published in one p big piece and in a book anywhere. Or maybe there are pieces that haven't been published in a book that we have on our site. Um, so in that sense, it might be sort of decolonial, um, but the ongoing structures of the legacy of colonialism and the antiquities trade do really um, inhibit full decolonization of the corpus. Um, and it really requires us to think a lot about what we mean about decolonization um, and um, that kind of community engaged work in this um, structure, which I will be talking about. So one of our challenges is reliable, verifiable data, right? Like who wrote it, right? 
who wrote it, who, where is it from, what document, what work, what historical work is this text even from, right? Like verifiable data. And we have manual metadata curation, which is time consuming, and not all team members are experts in like each particular text. And so getting the digital text online in a verifiable way can be delayed by just the manual metadata curation, right? We don't want to just put stuff online. Um, if we want to do community-engaged work with heritage communities um, in both Egypt and the di diaspora, um, we have a challenge of language, right? Um, vast majority of the heritage community doesn't actually know Coptic. Um, and so, and the major academic centers are in the global north and formal colonial powers. Um, there is a growing effort to teach the Coptic language in Egyptian universities, which is complicated because, of course, Egypt, Egyptian universities are not um, run by Copts, right? Let's just, so it's, it, that can be complicated. Um, we, we do have volunteers in the US, Egypt, Europe, advisory board members from all over the world, but language challenges remain because we don't have the capacity to increase the number of people who know Coptic. Um, times differences are a challenge. Um, making things accessible to the community of heritage um, as users, not just as volunteers or people we work with is a problem, right? Do we, how do we provide translations for all of our material? Um, expanding resources and awareness through volunteer participation of the heritage community and others is a challenge. Um, the training requires online, real-time work. It's labor time, labor time, labor time. And then last, sustainability. Other project strategies might involve institutional support, which we're not working in a library that has all these manuscripts. We're digitizing things all over the world. So our library isn't like, yes, let's do this. Um, we don't have the fundraising capacity. And um, other possibilities are not entirely anti-colonial or decolonial, right? Partnering with a well-resourced university in the US with a Coptic Studies program, becoming comfortable with data archiving or loss of interfaces, um, which is effectively a loss of access. So these are some of our challenges, how we're working with them. I would love to hear more from you about ideas you might have as well during lunch and other free time. Thank you.